Okay, so today we're going to create a frequency polygon and an ogive. So we'll start with the frequency polygon. A frequency polygon uses line segments to connect points located directly above class midpoint values for each class. Now, to find the class midpoints for each class, we're going to look at class midpoints. And in order to find those class midpoints, what we're going to do is we're just going to take the class limits for that class and add them together and divide by two. We're basically going to find the arithmetic mean of the class midpoints. Arithmetic mean means to add together and divide by how many values? Well, there are two class limits for each class. In the first class, the class limits are 5 and 8. And what we're going to do is we're going to find the arithmetic mean of 5 and 8 by adding 5 and 8, 5 plus 8, and dividing by 2. Same way we'd find an arithmetic mean normally. Well, that's 13 over 2, and 13 over 2 is around uh, 6.5. <laughs> it's exactly 6.5. All right, the next class midpoint value next class midpoint is going to be the average of that class's limits 9 plus 12 or the arithmetic mean that is of that class's limits 9 plus 12 over 2 which is 21 over 2 and 21 over 2 is 10.5 now when I was doing this before when I was actually finding class boundaries I showed you a trick where uh, I said if you found the first class boundary, you could actually use the class width, which is the distance here between two consecutive lower class limits. In the case of this example, the class width is 4. And what I said was you could find the first class boundary and just keep adding the class uh, width to the first class, lower class boundary, in order to get all the class boundaries. Well, the same thing will work for the class midpoints. So once you have the first class midpoint, 6.5, you can just keep adding 4 to get all the other class midpoints. And notice it works for this first pair. You take 6.5 and you add 4 to it and you get 10.5. You take 10.5 and you add 4 to it, you get 14.5. You take 14.5 and add 4 to it and you get 18.5. Take 18.5 and add 4 to it and you get 22.5. You take 22.5 and add 4 to it and you get the last class midpoint, 26.5. Now, it would have worked out to the same numbers if we had found the arithmetic mean of the class limits. Just so happens that this is a shortcut for that process. All you have to do is find the first one and just keep adding the class width. So once we have that, the next step is to put these into a graph with the line segments. Now, what we're going to do is we're going to take, um, we're going to graph ordered pairs, basically. And we're, the ordered pairs are going to have x values that are the class midpoints and y values that are the frequencies. So we're basically, we're graphing ordered pairs that look like this. Midpoint for the class, comma, frequency of the class. So let's go ahead and make our horizontal and vertical scales. So the vertical scale is going to represent the class's frequency and the horizontal scale is going to rep is going to have class midpoints and it's going to represent each class. So let's go ahead and put our classes, class midpoints on our horizontal scale. So the first class midpoint, if I remember correctly, well I probably don't remember correctly, so let's peek. The first class midpoint was 6.5. So I'll put 6.5 here on the horizontal scale. And then I'm just going to continually add 4 to that. The next one is going to be 10.5. And then 14.5. or 18.5. 22.5. And 26.5. So those are my class midpoints. On the vertical scale, I'm going to put my class frequency. So I have to count up to 5. 1, 2, 
three, four, five. And now I'm just going to graph ordered pairs um, that are going to represent the midpoint for the X and the frequency for the Y. So for the first class, the midpoint is 6.5 and the frequency is 3. So I graph the ordered pair 6.5. Three. The next one has a midpoint of 10.5 and a frequency of 4. So I go to the ordered pair to the point 10.5, 4. The next one has a midpoint of 14.5 and the frequency here is one. So I'm going to graph that ordered pair, 14.5, 1. And then the next class has the highest frequency, 18.5 for the midpoint, but the frequency of the class is 5. So I graph that. And my last two classes, represented by these midpoints here, both have frequency of 1. So the last step in creating this frequency polygon is to connect these dots with line segments. So I start at the origin and I make a line segment to the first dot and then I just go to the next dot in sequence, the next consecutive dot, drawing line segments to connect the dots. And once we've connected all our dots, we can say we are done creating our frequency polygon, we just have to make it an actual polygon by closing it by connecting the last ordered pair to the x-axis. And here we have created our frequency polygon. The next step, or the next objective, is to create an ogive. So let's take a look at the definition of an ogive. Okay. Well, an ogive is a line graph that depicts cumulative frequencies. Now, <laughs> that's what I just erased. Notice that this depicts cumulative frequencies. So the vertical scale is not just going to be for frequency, it's going to be for cumulative frequency. And what I want to do now is I want to go ahead and I want to calculate the cumulative frequencies. But also, an ogive uses the class boundaries, not the class midpoints like we just did. It uses the class boundaries for the horizontal scale. So what we're basically going to do is we're going to go ahead and we're going to look for our class boundaries and our cumulative frequencies. We've already found the class boundaries for this frequency distribution when we were creating the histogram. So let's go back and take a look at the histogram. So, or actually the class boundaries that we found while we were creating the histogram. So those are class boundaries for the histogram. And what we want to do now is we want to go ahead and uh, find the cumulative frequencies. The cumulative frequencies, if you recall, were the result of um, combining, or sorry, the result of adding the frequency for that class to the frequency for all previous classes. So for instance, the first class's cumulative frequency was three because that class has a frequency of three and there were no previous classes. The next one has a frequency of, a cumulative frequency of seven being four for this class plus the three for the previous class. And then the next class has a cumulative frequency of eight. Next class has a cumulative frequency of 13. The next class has a cumulative frequency of 14, and the last class has a cumulative frequency of 15. And the last cumulative frequency should actually be the um, sum of all the frequencies, or the number of data points in our raw data set. All right, now let's go ahead and uh, create our ogive. So we need a blank page here. Let's go ahead and create a blank page. Let's see. And 
now we are going to make our x and y axis to create our ogive so the y axis the vertical scale is actually going to represent cumulative frequencies so i have to go all the way up to 15 on that scale and the horizontal scale is going to represent my uh, classes using their class boundaries so let's see here let's go ahead and make some hash marks here on the vertical scale we're going to make 15. Uh, let's see this one two three four five six seven eight nine ten eleven twelve thirteen fourteen fifteen so we have to go all the way up to 15 because we're representing the cumulative frequencies on the y-axis and for the x-axis let's put our class boundaries so the first class boundary let's see first class boundary was 4.5 and then the next one is the result of adding 4 to that so I'll put 4.5 then I will put the next one is 8.5 and then the next is 12.5 the next is 16.5 next 20.5 the next 24.5 and the last is 28.5 so what we do is above the 8.5 we are going to put the frequency of the first class the cumulative frequency that is and the cumulative frequency from the first class was 3 so above 8.5 I'm going to plot a point on the uh, horizontally across from the three on the y-axis the next one above 12.5 the upper class boundary we're actually graphing the ordered pairs above the upper class boundaries um, the cumulative frequency for the next class is going to be above the upper class boundary for that class and that cumulative frequency was seven so we're going to graph an ordered pair above 12.5 uh, seven 12.5 and then we have three four five one two three four five six seven so we need to go to that height seven and we make an ordered pair we make a point there the next one is going to be uh, let's see above the next midpoint which is 16.5 and that's just slightly higher it's going to be at eight and the next one is going to take us all the way up to 13 so 9 10 11 12 13 okay so the next one takes us all the way up to 13 which is right around here and then we have the next one will be 14 slightly higher and the last one will be 15 okay. so here's how we create our ogive we're just going to connect these dots now with line segments so here we have a line graph and it represents cumulative frequencies and on the horizontal scale we have class boundaries and it's not a polygon so we don't have to connect it back to the x-axis and here is your ogive so this is an ogive for our data set